Hi, I'm Rantana Kadikar. I'm Shruti Kunjur. And I'm Shreya Kada. 71% of adolescent menstruating individuals remain unaware of menstruation until their first period. 58% of women have felt embarrassed with being on their period. Even more importantly, many individuals haven't received proper education about their bodies and have to miss school or work because of symptoms. Inspired by these issues, we chose menstrual health and hygiene as our instructional topic. Our goal was to use our instructional session to raise awareness and decrease the social stigma surrounding menstruation. We narrowed our target group to menstruating individuals between the ages 10 and 14, because those are the ages at which most of them go through puberty and start menstruating. Between those years is also a crucial period for helping them realize their identity and feel comfortable in their bodies. Menstruation is something that 50% of the global population experiences. It's important to break down the social stigma surrounding it so we can help improve conditions for those facing period poverty. In many places on the world, menstruating people face restrictions. By raising awareness, we can show that menstruation is a natural body process and decrease the taboo around it. Now social stigma against periods is more subtle. People are forced to use code names, including Aunt Flo, Code Red, Bloody Mary, and the Girl Flu to avoid a fear of being judged for having a completely natural process. By the end of our session, we wanted our students to learn more about their bodies, understand the stigma, and learn how to combat it, and overall feel better about their menstruation experiences. After deciding this, we planned the rest of our instructional session step by step. First, we decided which topics we would talk about and then researched information for those topics. Next, we combined all that information into a slides presentation and brainstormed additional activities that would engage our students. Each activity we chose was specific to our instructional topic and designed to be feasible on a virtual platform. Even though the participants couldn't physically interact and discuss with each other, we wanted to give them chances to do so. After creating an outline, we went through our plan several times to make sure it would run smoothly on the actual day. We built our entire presentation using online materials, given the current state of education. We hosted a Zoom call with 20 participants who had signed up for our call through advertisements we put on social media sites like Instagram. Once we were on the call, we began with brief introductions and then administered a brief pretest on an interactive website called GimKit. We then presented our comprehensive PowerPoint along with a Jamboard at the end in which participants could ask questions anonymously. We wanted to give another chance for participants to reinforce their knowledge about the information provided in the presentation. So we engaged in a guess the word game and case studies. In the guess the word game, we split the participants into two teams, Team Ice and Team Heat. We then read out a set of three clues for 13 menstruation related words. And the person who guessed the word first in the chat would receive a tally for their team. At the end of the game, the team with the most tallies would win. After the guess the word game, we read out case studies about possible scenarios that a menstruating individual might experience. The participants then discussed possible methods and actions that could be taken to make the situations better using the information they had already learned. One of the most important items that we wanted the participants to leave our meeting with was our app, period. We created this app to help spread awareness about menstruation beyond our instructional session. It is intended to help menstruating individuals deal with their symptoms, keep track of cycles and product use, and have a go-to resource for any questions they might have. We shared a QR code that participants could use to download the app, and during the meeting, we encouraged the participants to share the app with their friends as well. After presenting our app, we had a 15-question post-test to test their improvement of knowledge after doing the activities. We conducted a Mentimeter survey where the participants could give us any feedback they had on our presentation. Each team member played a crucial role in the development of our portfolio. We divided up tasks evenly, made sure we completed them on a weekly basis, and gave feedback on each of our previous tasks. When creating our app, only one of us could be logged in at a time. While one of us worked on the interface or the coding, the other two would work on finding instructional videos for the products or coming up with ways to alleviate certain symptoms. We communicated for a few hours every weekend, collaborated on important tasks, and discussed our next steps. Rachna focused on formatting the app and creating the pretest. Shruti formatted the portfolio and created the Mentimeter survey, and I worked on creating the post-presentation activities. To evaluate the effectiveness and impact of our instruction, we had all the participants take a survey at the end. They were able to give us feedback on the lesson and describe their thoughts about our activities. At the end, we were able to quantifiably test their progress by comparing the results of the pretest and the post-test. The average accuracy rate for the pretest was around 75%. While on the other hand, the average accuracy rate for the post-test was around 95%. This shows a significant improvement in their knowledge about menstrual health and hygiene. Thank you so much for listening to our presentation. We hope you enjoyed our portfolio.